Our final presentation is by Esla, and she will be sharing with us how do adolescents understand their food environment, a pilot study using photovoice in Eban, Ethiopia. Thank you. I'm very honored to be the last presenter of the conference and that there's still some people in the audience. Um, this is uh, part of the research from my PhD that I've conducted in Ethiopia. Um, but I'm uh, affiliated with Waring University and working together with Addis Ababa University. So it was a study looking at the perceptions of adolescents of the food environment in, based in, around schools. So basically we were, Addis Ababa is changing, the urban environment is changing. There's not only more cars and more construction, but also there have been studies from IFPRI that food prices of oil and sugar are going down and that fruits and vegetables and animal source food prices are actually going up. And also urbanization is increasing. Um, the urban population has doubled in the last 20 years almost or more. And um, also obesity, overweight and obesity is 20% in women in, in urban areas. So we were wondering how do adolescents perceive these changing environments, but not only the physical environment, we were also interested in the influences on the individual, the social and the macro level environment. So we selected one public school in Addis Ababa, worked with 15 students between 15 and 19 years old, and they had to own a smartphone in order to take the photographs. And we had um, equal numbers boys and girls. And once we, we selected them, we did uh, some interviews with them, anthropometry, dietary assessment, doing qualitative 24 hour recall. So then we start, after the, these interviews, we started with the photo voice um, intervention. But before that, um, we also at the same time did uh, an, the assessment of the objective food environment. So in the radius, you see the red dot in the middle is the school. In a radius of one kilometer around the school, um, we basically walked up and down every single road to assess every food and drink advertising, and then also assessed availability of certain foods in, in 60 of those food outlets and took photos of 138 kiosks. So on the bottom, you see an example of a kiosk. It's a very tiny shop. And we were curious what is in the front shelf of this kiosk, what is visible? And we analyzed this using this, the photos. So then the photo voice um, method basically works like this. You start with an introduction session with the, with the participants on basics of photography, but also issues around ethics and safety that obviously come once you take photographs. And then most importantly, um, making them understand the research questions. So we gave them two, two main research questions. One was, the, what are the challenges in your environment to eat healthy? And the other one was, what are the opportunities in your environment to eat healthy? And they had to answer these questions with photographs. So this was a bit of a difficult concept um, to, to, um, to grasp by the, by the students. So then they had two weeks to take photos with their mobile phones. And when they came back, um, we conducted photo illicit interviews. But before that, the students were selecting, going through a selection process. So out of all the photos they have taken, they had to select which photos answered best the, the research questions. And then these selected photos were based on those we conducted photo illicit interviews. And then after that, the selected photographs um, went into a focus group discussion. So they were again re, um, remixed basically and then discussed boys and girls fo separate focus group discussions um, where they had to do again a selection of all these photos based on the research questions and then also detailed discussion on the, on the selected um, photographs to get more information, not just from the individual, the ideas, to get uh, a common understanding from the, from the whole group. So how is this um, participatory? I mean, there's two, two main, main aspects in, in, in our research what students participated in, in the research. So first was the selection process. So out of all these photos, they had to select on the left, you see, they had to select the photos that best answered the research question related to what are the challenges in, in your food environment to eat healthy. Another uh, part where they were involved in, in, in analysis is to identify themes. So they looked at all the photographs and had to identify themes and then assign the photographs that they felt match uh, this theme. So this is just to quickly give you an idea of how we did the analysis. Just an example, we used uh, Atlas T uh, as a software and had like a whole code book based on the, on the framework that I showed before, uh, socio-ecological framework. 
and this is an example from one student where we basically linked the photograph that the student took with the quotes of the student and assigned quotes based on the, on the framework. So what we found um, from, from the data was basically four main themes um, based on the, on the four different levels of influence. So on the individual level, it was mostly around knowledge. So that the knowledge was mostly around food safety and hygiene. So whatever was not rotten was considered healthy. And I will give examples and photographs to all those four. And on the social level, it was basically all about the mothers are deciding everything, the students have no say. And then on the physical level, it was mostly about hygiene and sanitation of the, of the environment that the students felt almost uh, felt actually disgusted um, by their environment. And on the macro level, it was um, mostly about food prices and the students were saying we go for the cheap stuff. So to give you an example of, of the, in, the, the knowledge uh, related to this between food safety and, and nutrition, basically what was considered not, what was not rotten was considered healthy. And this is an example where they had to um, categorize photos around the theme unhealthy. And you can see, I hope you can see, um, three photographs of fruits and vegetables. But because they're sold on the side of the road or in a cart, they're considered unhealthy. And the same you see the other way around um, with the category healthy foods. You see fruits and vegetables at the top that are nicely arranged in, 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 in outlets, but you also see local traditional foods that are considered healthy, but at the same time, there's three photos of packaged, ultra-processed foods that the students consider healthy. So on the social level, um, it was all about the mothers. Um, so this is a photo of a mother. My mother cooks everything, the student said, and basically we have no say in what we eat or want to eat. Our moms force us to eat, um, even if we uh, don't like, like to eat. And basically one mom was quoted, you can choose what you want to eat when you move out of the house. And as solutions, I found very sad that they were saying like, if our mothers could just ask us for our food preference. And then lastly, there were areas particularly on food safety and hygiene where the students were eager to teach their parents um, and also had more knowledge and were even getting frustrated at their mothers not keeping their kitchen as clean as the students wanted it. And then at the food and uh, at the physical environment, there was a student saying, I love banana, I really love it. And whenever I go there and buy, it, I see things which I don't like and I return back without buying bananas. And what she was talking about was she saw a rat. So it was not necessarily that the bananas were bad or, or rotten. It was really something in the environment that kept her from buying actually something healthy. And then another student was saying, we use garlic in our day-to-day -day diet. And if there's no water available when we prepare food, we might just peel the garlic and use it without washing it. And garlic in the Ethiopian cooking is cooked for hours. So if they're worried about not washing something that is cooked, uh, it's obvious that the students, that the adolescents don't uh, hardly eat fresh fruits and vegetables. And the solutions, they wanted these vendors, the, the, in, the informal sellers on the street to be banned. And also they were asking again for packaged foods. Um, that, that foods would become not bananas, but necessarily foods become more available in packaged form. And then this was about the macro level. Um, and this is a student that I hope will be the finance minister of Ethiopia one day. Um, he said, Usual, usually cheap foods are unhealthy. Healthy foods are expensive. We go for cheap stuff sold on the street and have both healthy and unhealthy food the same price. We wouldn't buy cheap food. We would we'd rather have options. So then we asked them, okay, let's say you have 10 beer, which is equivalent to about 40 uh, cent, US cents, um, and your mother is not deciding, it's all you deciding, it doesn't look great. So only two students um, would choose fruits, um, and then the rest is sugar sweetened beverages, candy, and fried food. So some of the, the data we got from the photo voice would explain it, but also looking at the food environment, this is what we found there, that on the left you have basically fruits and vegetables, on the right sugar sweetened beverages, and in the, about 20% of the shops, there were fruits and vegetables available, um, hardly visible on the front shelf of the kiosk and not at all advertised. But then when it comes to sugar sweetened beverages, they were available in 80% of the, of the shops and also visible in the front shelf and advertised in 70 to 80% of the shops. So considering that the students are, are worried about food safety in their environment, um, the lack of availability of, of fruits and vegetables, and the uh, high they're surrounded basically by advertising and availability of sugar sweetened beverages and, and packaged foods. Um, this could be rather concerning. So this is just some quotes from the students, which I found very nice that not only did they feel free to talk and felt they had a platform 
to exchange and discuss freely. It also, the, the intervention helped them to look deeper in their living environment and it helped me improve my food choices. So just to say thank you to the students and the facilitators and uh, Agriculture for Nutrition and Health first funding the study. <laughs>